the way that people call out can come across as dehumanizing rather than actually engaging in open dialogue. So that approach can end up just flipping the oppression so that those who were the oppressors now become the oppressed. So an example of that, I've been to some conference sessions where some outspoken feminists have engaged in what I would consider to be oppressive acts towards men, which I don't understand because in their presentations, they talk about how problematic it is to engage in such behaviors towards women. So therefore, they're going to do it towards men. I understand that some people like to take the approach of giving somebody a taste of their own medicine. But if a behavior is problematic when it's being done to you, why would you do it to somebody else? So the same thing happens with cancel and call out culture. The ways that people engage in calling out somebody can in fact become dehumanizing, abusive, or at the very least problematic. So here's a quote from page 30 that's important to consider. Quote, shaming and ridiculing one's interlocutor through ad hominem attacks, for instance, or irrevocably associating them with a hate group such as the KKK reduces them to objects and rejects their subjectivity for personal growth and transformation. This, to Ferri, is the work of dehumanization, end quote. I think that's a really important thing to consider. The ways that people sometimes communicate online can treat people as immutable objects that are incapable of transformation or growth or evolution, however you want to consider it. And this is problematic. Like when I was younger, I engaged in behaviors and said and did things that I no longer do because I've grown. I've learned that, oh, even though I might intend it as a joke, it might not be received that way. Or going a bit deeper, some of the things that I thought and said were based around biases that were unconscious to me at the time. And I now understand were problematic. And to go even deeper, I have biases that are problematic right now that I'm not aware of. But the only way that I can become aware of it is by continuing to reflect and engage in dialogue. So acknowledging that who I was five years ago is different than who I am today, which is different than who I'm going to be five years from now. And so we need to consider that when engaging with people online as well. Somebody might say something that is sexist or racist, transphobic, homophobic, etc. They might not be aware of it. So we don't need to treat them as lesser than human by objectifying them and saying, you will never change. Some people might not on some things, others will. And we won't know until we actually engage in some kind of a dialogue. But we can't do that if we engage in cancel culture in particular, because that stops the conversation. and says, this person will never change, therefore I am done engaging with him. Here's a quote from page 30. Quote, to this end, Freire asserts that those who avoid such encounters treat others as mere objects. Instead of nurturing life, they kill life. Instead of searching for life, they flee from it. And these are oppressor characteristics. Thus, similar to vitriolic callouts, canceling someone denies them as subjects and reduces them to immutable objects, end quote. This excerpt of the CSKA podcast is from episode number 153, which is titled, What if Freire had Facebook? A critical interrogation of social media woke culture among privileged voices in computer science education discourse.